Hello everyone, welcome to Study IQ English. Well, China is making news for another shocking innovation. We are talking about China's construction of world's first artificial floating island that is capable of surviving nuclear blast, cyclone, high tide and typhoons. This will be operational by 2028 and although China says it is purely a scientific experiment. It is only meant for deep ocean research, oceanography and it is purely a civilian scientific program. But the global community has its own concerns. Given the fact that the planned deployment of this island is in the controversial South China Sea, an area which is known for China's aggressive expansion policy. So whether it is really a pure scientific initiative or does China have a long-term intention that the world countries are still not sure about? In this quick video, relevant for GS Paper 2 International Relations and GS Paper 3 Nuclear Technology and Science, let's look at what China has been up to. Well, China is creating this massive mobile that's movable floating artificial island and it is ultimately meant as per China for deep sea research and strategic presence in the ocean. This is the world's first artificial floating island that is capable of bearing the impact of nuclear explosion, severe sea storms as well as long-term sea conditions without having any destruction, without experiencing any degradation. It is scheduled for completion and operational readiness by 2028. And before we proceed, here's a quick question to you. Last month, we spoke about Fumdis, a characteristic phenomena of floating vegetation in water. Can you quickly answer in the comment box which state and which lake am I referring to? A great way of linking and therefore remembering current affairs. So do let me know. And now coming back to China's artificial floating island. This island has formally been named as the Deep Sea All Weather Resident Floating Research Facility. Now look at the magnitude. It is about 78,000 tons. It follows a semi-submersible twin hull design that you shall see in the image in the next slide. And it is planned to accommodate 238 people. People here can survive for months without any infrastructural help, without any food supply, without any support from outside. So for about four months, people can safely inhabit this island. About 238 people can be safely accommodated. If you look at the dimensions, it stretches 138 meters in length, 85 meters in breadth. The deck height will stand 45 meters above the sea level. No wonder it shall be operational even in case of severe oceanic storms, severe high tide. No matter even if it's a tropical cyclone, this floating island is not going to get impacted at all. That's what China claims. Now, China also says that this island is specifically prepared for protection against nuclear attack. It says, China says this platform is a purely civilian scientific infrastructure. That's the claim made by China. We all know there is no country that's going to believe it right now. But it is also designed in such a way that repeatedly the Chinese government has been referring to the GJB 1060.11991. Now, this is a military specification for nuclear blast resistance and that is also making this initiative questionable that if it's a purely civilian scientific research program then why does china keep referring to its infrastructure which relates with nuclear blast resistance specification that's one question people have in mind another thing is it being a rare nuclear blast resistance design that uses meta material sandwich panels as a key part of this platform. So now we see the doubts are coming from here. That one, China keeps referring to this technology out here, which is a nuclear military reference. At the same time, this is also about utilizing a metamaterial sandwich panel. That is a key part of this platform. Now, scientists are therefore intrigued that although today on paper, China says it is this technology which will enable this floating island to stay absolutely safe, safe and stable in case of the most powerful shock. 
in any case of blast nothing is going to happen to this island because it will convert a big shock into gentle very very gentle tremors and nothing will happen but because the reference is being made to a nuclear technology yes the other countries have a reason to worry now china also says this island can sustain waves between 6 to 9 meters and it will withstand category 17 typhoon the most powerful tropical cyclone as per classification at the same time it also as we just mentioned is using a special technology called meta material sandwich panel now do remember for the prelims sometimes in the prelims they ask you these specific terminologies and what does it relate with as we are heading towards 2026 upsc prelims do remember it is this artificial island that's using meta material sandwich panel which will enable the island to absorb any kind of shock by converting powerful shock into very mild and minute vibrations so nothing will happen to the people who are inhabiting the island at a given point of time these are certain important things we need to keep in mind and then china also says that this facility is ultimately about advancing our blue agenda including deep sea resource extraction marine renewable energy as well as climate research now as most of the countries across the world including india are working towards their maritime security they are working towards promoting their blue economy is this purely an intention of china to promote its blue economy its maritime security and resource expansion or is it something actually dangerous in hiding that's something we will discover as days and weeks pass by a quick practice question for upsc prelims with reference to china's deep sea all weather resident floating island research facility look at the following statements one it uses meta material sandwich technology to reduce the impact of high intensity shock waves two the platform can remain operational for months without any external resupply and third it is officially categorized by china as a dual use military and civilian maritime deployment facility which of these statements do you think is or are valid let me know in the comment box apart from the other answer that i already asked you and then if you have any other perspective about south china if you have any other perspective about in general maritime security indo pacific south china indian ocean do let me know in the comment box i really request you to make these comments non political non personal and yet upsc relevant let's grow as a community by exchanging our vision our ideas and bits of information a quick reminder those students who are writing the upsc exam 2027 yes this could be a great solution for you because at a price of only 12999 a very small price you get in return all gs papers in form of classroom teaching notes annotation online material news prelims mains interview guidance everything one on one mentorship and specially designed counseling sessions by faculties all this coming your way in hindi in english and bilingual format too batches are available in the morning evening weekend all that guaranteeing your upsc 2027 success all you need to do is use code splive sp live instantly you can have access to this 12999 course that supports your preparation for more than one year and admissions are closing tomorrow that's 25th november so please hurry up and in case you are writing the exam for upsc 2028 a similar opportunity at only a price of 31999 we offer you more than 15 months yes more than 15 months of all gs all csat preparation prelims gs paper 1 news current affairs mentorship counseling everything included at a humble price so use code splai when take the advantage of this opportunity admissions will close tomorrow that's 25th november 2025 stay tuned for more updates thank you so much